In an exclusive interview with CBS News, the FBI is confirming the preliminary statistics in its annual crime report for 2020. According to the Bureau's initial findings, the coronavirus pandemic did not slow the nation's homicide rate. Instead, the number of murders climbed 29 percent, even while most of the country was under lockdown. It is the largest single-year increase since 1968. Joining us now for more on this is CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga. Hi, Nicole. So you spoke with the FBI's assistant director to the agency's Criminal Justice Information Services Division about these preliminary numbers. What more did he tell you? Yeah, Tanya, well, you can see from the data a 29 percent increase in the year 2020 compared to 2019. The FBI preliminary data also shows almost 5,000 more murders last year than in 2019. But the murder rate, we should point out, remains well below the particularly violent data we saw in the 1990s. Now, murder rose uh, particularly in big and medium-sized cities, the homicide rate jumping by 40 percent, for instance, in cities with a population between 100,000 to about 250,000. And even with the uptick in murders and a roughly 5% increase in violent crime, overall major crimes actually dropped to about 4 to 5% in 2020. Property crimes, for instance, saw an 8% reduction. Keep in mind, there are obvious reasons for a decline in shoplifting amid this pandemic once stores closed. But 2020 saw overall crime on the decline for the 18th straight year. And this fact is interesting, Tanya. 77% of reported homicides in 2020 were committed with a firearm. That's actually the highest share ever reported. I spoke with Michael Chrisman, who oversees the FBI's Criminal Justice Information Services and told me this is a troubling trend. Here's what the assistant director had to say. The numbers are very concerning. And, and certainly, again, now that we've collected those numbers, we want to put a strong analytical effort behind those numbers. And we want to identify trends. Uh, again, I use the word commonalities. Anything we can do um, to make law enforcement more aware or to provide training um, around those numbers. And certainly at the end of the day, the goal is um, improved policing. And Tanya, officials familiar with FBI intelligence also tell CBS News they believe there's a correlation between law enforcement action or engagement with the public and the spike in the violent crime rate. So, you know, Nicole, the coronavirus pandemic had most of the country on lockdown almost all of the 2020 calendar year. So how did all of these homicides essentially happen? Why are we seeing this dramatic spike in murders? And what more can you tell us about where we saw those spikes? Yeah, in terms of where we saw the spikes, Tanya, one thing that actually has stayed the same through the pandemic, the state of Louisiana had the highest murder rate for the 32nd straight year. But in some cities, we did see some flatlining. Chicago and New York, for instance. St. Louis, which boasted the nation's highest murder rate back in 2020, has also seen a sizable decline this year. Meanwhile, we have seen increases in Las Vegas, you know, cities like Portland, Oregon, compared to last year. But the question remains, you point out, if people spent much of their time in inside during the pandemic, why did violent crime increase? Well, experts and analysts I've spoken with have various thoughts on the matter. Uh, there's a tension and conflict in society. Some experts say we saw it play out in the aftermath of George Floyd's uh, killing in police custody, questions about the legitimacy and procedural justice that has really driven the police reform movement. Also, a stockpiling of guns among the American public beginning back to the Obama administration. That's why we see, you know, so many shells, police tell us, at some of these law enforcement scenes. And specifically related to the pandemic, you know, COVID-19 has really served as a pressure cooker for many. There's been what some experts have called a reduction in outlets. So I spoke earlier today with executive director of the Teen and Police and Service Academy, Dr. Everett Penn, who runs a program that's designed to reduce the social distance between at-risk youth and law enforcement personnel. And in the age of health-mandated social distancing, those programs, though still conducted over Skype and Zoom, are not as hands-on as they used to be. The same goes for other intervention programs, nonprofits, churches, government agencies taking a back seat as this pandemic plays out. 
And homicides are only a part of the data collected by the FBI in its annual crime report. What else does the Bureau keep track of? And what are some obstacles the agency faces in collecting these numbers from police agencies across the country? Yeah, that's right. Monday's Uniform Crime Report is one of many data sets the FBI keeps. You uh, may have heard the FBI is in the process of launching a new data set that tracks law enforcement suicides. There are efforts to expand its program of tracking police use of force. And another that's received even greater attention amid this pandemic is the FBI's hate crime reporting. Now, reporting is voluntary, and the FBI right now is actively recruiting law enforcement agencies to participate more, to submit their data. But this has been an uphill climb for the Bureau for years. In 2020, nationally, there were more than 3,000 law enforcement agencies nationwide that did not report hate crime data to the FBI. And of the more than 15,000 law enforcement agencies that did participate, over 60 percent said they had zero hate crimes, a number that experts and advocates across the country say is just not credible, Tanya. There were 7,759 reported hate crimes in the U.S. last year. I spoke with the assistant director about that increase. Take a listen. Hate crime reporting is, is the highest level we've seen since 2008. And I think with some pending data that we have, it will ultimately end up being the highest uh, reporting year since 2001. Uh, certainly, when we talk about hate crime, we talk about race, ethnicity, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, religion, disability. And I think right now we would, we would say that um, the largest portion of hate crime is really uh, targeting the black or African American community. Those are where our largest numbers lie. You heard it there, Tanya. Hate crimes are up, but we don't even have the full picture yet. And we know that the pandemic also hurt states' ability to report those numbers to the FBI. So when all the reporting is said and done, the assistant director saying he believes we'll have seen a 20-year high in hate crimes in 2020. All right. Nicole Skanga, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.